Hello and welcome back to the Red Sofa. 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 Not She's getting good. good. Yeah, I know. Uh, so today we want to speak to you about something that's very close to our hearts, uh, which is the charity Compassion. And I know, Penny, that you sponsor three children with Compassion. We do. And you have done for quite a little while now, haven't you? We do. Um, well, one of them is, is more recent than the other. Um, the first two are Musa from Tanzania. Little boy from Tanzania. He, he's not a little boy anymore. Mm. He's he's a big boy now. Mm. Um, and Anahi from Bolivia. We started sponsoring those two children when our son, I think, was six, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. um, and we liked the idea of sponsoring two children that were going to be of the same age as James, and it it would be a link um, for him yeah. to what else is going on in the world. And I think. In the Western world, we can be terribly isolated mm. from the suffering that happens in other places. Yeah. And we wanted to try and introduce to James at this young age, actually, there's a bigger picture out there. So that was how it started. We were at New Wine. We came across this charity, Compassion, and we felt that sponsoring a boy, boy and a girl, similar age to James, would be a great thing to do. If I'm honest, I didn't think we'd do much of the letter writing. Right. Um, yeah. I felt that it would be a monthly amount of money that we could easily afford um, and it would bring something to somebody whose life was difficult in another part of the world. Now just to introduce you to the two children, Musa, um, his parents had both died, um, AIDS being a huge problem in that part of the world, so both parents were dead. He's living with his grandma. His grandma is elderly and frail, so therefore he's seen by compassion as a child at very high risk um, of having no one to support him. Um, so we started sponsoring him, and I remember the time that it really got me here was just after Christmas. We'd sent him some money at Christmas, um, which... We didn't know what it was going to be spent on, but we were pretty sure it was going to be sent on something sensible. Yeah. There's not a lot of Lego to buy out there. Yeah. Um, and um, we received a thank you letter and we received a photograph. And the thank you letter said, thank you for the money that you sent me. This is translated from whatever language it is they speak. I can't remember what the language is. Mm. Um, but thank you for the money you sent me. He bought himself clothes, or he and his grandma had been out and bought clothes for him. They bought clothes that were utterly enormous on him, because yeah. these clothes have got to last. This Long is time. the one set of clothes he's mm. going to have this year, so they've got to last. So they're enormous, and he's standing there wearing his enormous clothes. He's standing wearing a pair of shoes. He's never had a pair of shoes before, mm -hmm. so he's really excited. And, sit and, and, and he bought a bag for his school books. He's never had school books before. He's never had a bag before. So he's just, and he's, it's standing there with it all. And then on the floor, there are two little, three little bags of, or two bags of what looked like rice or something, mm. um, and a bottle of, a bottle of pop standing there. And it turned out that, and he said in his letter, he said with it, there was enough money left after I bought the clothes and the bag that we were able to afford both rice and peas mm. on Christmas Day. And you suddenly realise how absurdly much we have yeah. in the Western world. And we, th there's an awful lot talked about, um, uh, about poverty in the West, and there is a lot of poverty, but I think there's far more spiritual and emotional poverty than than all the other kinds of poverty. Mm. But this little chap, just, and, and it absolutely broke my heart. Now he's now 17, 18, he wants to be a teacher. He's worked hard all the way through his school life. I've had letters going backwards and forwards between me and him. And his world has been changed mm. by that little thing that we were able to do. That's amazing. Absolutely fabulous. Now Anahi, when we took her on, we, she's, um, as I say, she's from um, Bolivia, and we knew that if this little girl did not receive an education, 
and the future could only hold one mm. thing, and that's prostitution. Mm. And that's the way of women that don't get an education unless they're very lucky, um, or in, in poverty-stricken areas. Um, and she, we, for the first three years, we had a little girl in the photograph, I said we get these photos once a year, wearing the same dress for three years. So at first it's utterly enormous on her. Yeah. It's a little yellow dress and it came right the way down to the ground and was hanging off her. Second year it was kind of fitting and the third year it was too small. Yeah. Um, and this girl, she is now 16, same age as James, and we receive photos of her. And from being, in the very early photos, a defensive, valueless, I have no self-esteem photograph, she's become a confident, bubbly little girl. Mm -hmm. And she's the kind of girl that you, you can see in her photos that she's the kind of girl that when something happens in the playground, she will be there to help yeah. and to pick somebody up and to give yeah. them a hug. And you, I mean, we didn't do that. Jesus did that and love did that and education and everything that gets poured on them by compassion. But there's a little but bit you of help, you helped give her that opportunity. We did that. Which, yeah. It's just it's amazing. So amazing. It's Absolutely just amazing. Yeah. So, um, and what about the third? Cause the third one, one is um, Ajani. Ajani is in Haiti. Um, and Ajani is now 18. Now, we took Ajani on when she was 17, and we decided we wanted to take an older compassion child on because it's actually very hard yeah. for older children to get sponsorship. Mm, I can imagine. Um, now, but having said that, it's such a good sponsorship opportunity because if you're thinking, I can afford this at the moment, but I not, might not be able to afford it in three years' time or five years' mm. time or whatever, just doing it for that short period. And, and Ajani, she works so hard. Mm. Um, so her writing has just come on in leaps and bounds. Mm. Um, and a child that has lived with no hope right the way till she was 17. Mm. She will now stay on the Compassion Programme until she's 21 and and she works like a Trojan. She's absolutely amazing. They do such great work, don't they, Compassion? They I do. Mean, they just do. behind the scenes, you you just can't imagine what yeah. goes on, can you? They it's do. just phenomenal. So I, I presume when they um, when you get the letters and they're translated, is that Compassion that actually organises all yes. that? Yes, yeah. Compassion does everything. So there's quite a lot of behind the scenes work going on as well, which is where yes. a lot of, so why we do, but that's why we, we, um, we are ambassadors for them, because they just need sponsorship all the time, don't they? They need, the thing is, their slogan is changing the world one child at a time. Mm -hmm. And you're, it's kind of tempting to think that actually, what difference is one child going to make? But for that child, it makes all the difference in the world. And so. there is so, so, so little hope sometimes that you just get a little bit overwhelmed with it. But if you can just help one person, then that's just got to be... Yeah worth the while so there are good things that are happening out there as well yes. you've got to stay positive about that because yes. even a little bit can go a long way and if you are interested and you just or you just want to have a look we'll put the details for um, compassion at the end of the video so you can go and have a look and just see what a fantastic job they do mm. get involved yeah thank you so much talk to you soon bye <laughs>